All right, guys, this is going to be a real quick one. So today, I just want to do a really quick example. Uh, I want to talk about reversing the order of integration in order to turn a thing I can't so much integrate into a thing I can so much integrate. So here we're looking at this example. So I've conjured up a kind of a horrible thing. Uh, we're integrating from 0 to 6 and from x over 3 to 2, x times the square root of y cubed plus 1 dy dx. So the reason this is intractable right now is I'm looking at this and I'm going to myself, okay, like maybe I can do this. Maybe we'll just have at it. Uh, so I'm looking at this stuff under the square root because I'm integrating dy, right? So the x is constant, doesn't change anything. Uh, in fact, we could take that x and we could pull that out through that integral. Um, it ain't helping, it ain't hurting. It's just not really doing anything for me. Uh, so then I'm looking at this stuff under the square root and I'm thinking to myself, Hmm, can't integrate that flat. Uh, maybe I can make a quick u substitution. So I'm like, okay, so let's let u be something like y cubed plus one. That makes du something like two, uh, oops, that's not how you differentiate, Joe. Three y squared dy. Like, okay, I got a dy uh, and I can make a three, but I can't make any y squareds. And this isn't one of those ones where you can solve for y squared here, or solve for y here. It's not, well, I mean, I guess it could, but it's not so easy. So I'm going to say, yeah, this, this isn't working out the way I want it to work out. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to go, all right, let's, uh, let's just look at this here thing. So I'm going to say, what if I was able to integrate dx first? That might get me some y's because this region isn't a rectangle. So there, if I integrate dx first, there ought to be some y's in the bounds. The problem is right now I have bounds written in x's first. That means I need to think about this a little bit. So I'm looking at this region. I'm thinking, OK, so this is the region between y is x over 3. So let me get myself out one of these. I'm going to do a little by hand graphing and then we'll look at Desmos quick. So I'm like, okay, so it's from y equals x over three to y equals two. So y equals two is pretty easy. That's up here. Okay. So we're talking about stuff down below y equals two. And we're talking about stuff above y equals x over three. So that's a line, right? It's got a slope of up, up one for over three. Uh, one, two, three, one, two, three. Those are just garbage dots, Joe. All right, so I got a line that looks something like this. Okay, so we're above that. We're below the dotted line, right? And we're also supposed to be in between zero and six, right? So that's gonna be in between X is zero and X is six. So that's gonna be this region in here. That's a little triangle. So I'm gonna throw this in Desmos quick. So here you go, here it is thrown in Desmos. I got an inequality for Y, I got an inequality for X. There's kind of a cool thing you can do with Desmos. So like right here, I'm saying, okay, this purple region in the middle here ought to be what I'm talking about. You can actually do a kind of dependency here. So if you put curly braces after this, you just take this guy, cut it and drop it in there. And then we'll get just our region that we're talking about. So that's the little triangle I'm talking about. So, uh, I'm just gonna I'm gonna snip this little triangle because it's gonna be easier to talk with this one's graph. Okay, so I want to reverse this order, but I can't change the region. So if I'm gonna reverse the order, I want to think, okay, instead of starting with where do y's vary between, I'm gonna start where do x's vary between. So I'm gonna turn my little Riemann rectangles on their sides. Right. So we're gonna do this. So this is running from X is zero on this side over to that line. Well, that line was Y equals X over three. 
which is the same thing, right, as 3y equals x. So this is the line x equals 3y over here for my right hand side. So that what that means is I can rewrite my double integral. We're still integrating the same function, right? So don't think this is going to change the function you're integrating. We're still integrating x times the square root of y cubed plus 1. We're going to integrate dx dy now. The x's are going to range from 0 up to 3y. And then the y's, right, so that's my x's. So then the y's are going to range from 0 to 2. You see that? And now we're going to have something that we might be able to integrate. So let's try that. So we're like, okay, so same same volume, right, that I'm talking about. I'm talk, still talking about the volume underneath this surface over top of that rectangle. And I'm like, okay, maybe I can integrate now. Uh, this crap, this square root of y cubed plus one shit, uh, that stuff is constant with respect to x. So that's just going to chill. So I'm going to have the integral from zero to two of the square root of y cubed plus one times, uh, well, x's integral is x squared over two. Then I need a, I've still got a dy, I haven't done that integration. And I need to evaluate from x is zero to x is three y here. So I'm gonna make that substitution. I'm gonna integrate from zero to two. And I have the square root of y cubed plus one. And then in here, I'm going to have a 9y squared over 2 minus 0 squared over 2 dy. And so ultimately here, I'm going to get 9 halves times the integral from 0 to 2 of y squared times the square root of y cubed plus 1 dy. And since I know what I'm aiming at, I'm going to actually break that 9 into a 3 out here and a 3 in here. Now I'm going to do that u substitution that I wanted to do to begin with, right? So I'm going to let u be y cubed plus 1. Then du is going to be 3y squared dy. I've got myself my dy over here. I've got my d. Uh, sorry, my 3y squared here. So the green underlined stuff is going to turn into my du. So I'm going to get 3 halves, the integral from 0 to 2. Oh, whoops, those are old bounds, right? So we're going to have an integral. We'll figure bounds in a second. Uh, I've got a du now, and I've got the square root of u. Now for my bounds, when this bottom bound that's in y equals zero and the top bound is y equals two right so i'm going to swap those to u by subbing zero in for y in my u equation so that's going to give me u is one and i'm going to get uh from plugging two in i'm going to get u is nine then we're going to do our integral so we're going to get three halves, uh, when we integrate u to the one half power, we get u to the three halves power over three halves. Oh, hey, look at that. That's hella convenient. And then we're evaluating from one to nine. Those are now in u, so you don't have to back substitute, so you can just slam these in there. So you got u to the, oops, not u. We're gonna get nine to the three halves power minus one to the three halves power which is going to give us 27 minus 1, get 26. Okay, so what does the 26 mean here? 26 here means there's 26 cubic units underneath this surface above this triangle. Uh, I'm going to pause this and go render that in math 3D quick. Okay, so I've got something worked out here. Um, so in order to graph a surface, there's this tool called a parametric surface. So you can graph the graph of a function pretty easily with these. Graphing other stuff's a little tricky. Um, we're gonna talk about these a bit more, like quite a bit more later. Um,
but it's kind of worth picking up just to be able to make pictures of stuff. So what I did with this is I did u comma v. So u is just playing the part of x, v is playing the part of y. Then I plugged my function in for uh, the z coordinate. And then I plugged my bounds in for u and v. I used the bound, the newer bounds, um, but you could use the old ones too. It doesn't matter. Then I kind of dorked around with some parametric curves here. So this little line is the vertical line here. Um, this top, for whatever it's worth, I plugged in uh, the point six comma two in the domain, right in the x y plane, into my function, and figured out that this is eighteen high. So this is uh, this line goes from uh, six comma two comma zero to six comma two comma eighteen, and then I've got these other two parametric curves. Those are the these two in the plane, just so I can see my triangle. So as you can see, I've got my piece of my kind of bent surface above a triangle. You might notice that looks a lot like a triangle. So just kind of like maybe some ballpark stuff. Um, if I just kind of ballpark this. I'm just going to grab a picture of this quick. So I got 26. Oops, where did that go? That's not a helpful place for that. Okay, so let me let me look at this shape a little bit. So this shape is a triangle on the bottom, right? So this distance is six across here. This distance here is two. And then this height for the whole thing is 18. So the whole rectangle, right? This entire rectangle going up to 18 and over and then all the way down, right? This whole rectangle here has a volume that we could figure out. So that whole volume is two times six times 18 which feels a lot bigger than 26 because it's 12 times 18 and 18 is almost 26 already, right? So that feels a bit big, uh, but I'm not really filling up the whole box here. If I look at this kind of shape, right? It's above this triangle. So that's like, oh, okay. So the area of the base is like 12. Area of base, it's like 12 units, right? And then it's like 18 units tall, but it's not actually the whole thing. You guys see that? It's only this kind of slice. But if I took two of these, if I like flip it over, I think, I think it, you know, it feels like I sliced it in half, doesn't it? Like if I, yeah, I feel, I really, I just feel like I probably sliced it in half-ish. So I'm like, okay, so the area of the base is maybe 12, by 18 like so if the if it was this whole shape right if we went all the way up and had our whole triangle we'd figure it's the area of the base times the height might give me 12 times 18 that's maybe a bit more reasonable but you might notice that it's not actually quite half of it because actually this part over the volume of this part over here, this is quite a bit fatter than this part. You guys see that I cut from the narrow edge here down towards this guy. So I think there's probably three of them in there. I'm not really totally sure, but I'm pretty sure that this is seeming reasonable. 26 seems legit. We could kind of build this thing. We could like stack some cubes in here and see what we're getting. Um, or we could do like Riemann integration, right? But we're just going to reinvent the integral again. I just want to be sure this is like kind of half ass reasonable. And so I feel like I'm eh, maybe 26. It feels, feels okay. It's not, not the most comfortable with it, but I'm not uncomfortable with it. Um, so, uh, what we've learned is sometimes you can reverse the order of integration to make a crappy integral easier. This is a trick you only get here. Like we didn't have this trick in Calc 2, nobody taught you this trick in Calc 2 because you weren't integrating over regions and so there wasn't 
there weren't two things to switch, right? You did kind of see this in like integrating shells and washers. You had a couple different options for how to pick those things apart. This is that same thought more or less. Um, bit feels a bit different, but I promise it's about the same thought. Um, that's it for the day. Thanks guys, or for this video anyway.